the next uh, little while, Thanos uh, uh, shortly. But uh, delighted to say, uh, Thanos Hira, the uh, chair of Worcestershire County Cricket Club, has joined us for a chat for the next uh, little while. Thanos, uh, good to see you. First of all, this game, um, crikey, <laughs> twists and turns are plenty, isn't it? You, you never know, um, you know, what the outcome will be. But um, a few few wickets now, and uh, hopefully we can bat on. Hopefully, a, a, an easier wicket score runs than perhaps the first innings. Here's hoping. Yeah, the wicket certainly. The pitch certainly looks like it's um, eased up. But uh, Pennington is denied the chance to um, deliver his first ball the over because something has caught Anishdal's attention behind his arm. He's got 93. And he's the the man Worcestershire will want to prize out here. Here comes Pennington up to the wicket, past the umpire and bowls, and Dahl is forward, and pushing it up and fielded on his follow through. So we've got an update for BBC Halford and Worcester coming very very shortly. Well, Derbyshire have moved on to 30747, so their lead is beyond 250 now, 252. But Worcestershire have taken a wicket this morning. They've made the new ball count, and they've got rid of Matty McKiernan for 71. A good catch down at deep third by Josh Baker, who's got a safe pair of hands as he was looking to whip Dylan Pennington through mid wicket. Leading edge, a real looping catch, went a long way, and uh, Baker took a good take down at uh, deep third. So he'd gone for 71, the end of their partnership, which was worth 140 between him and Anuj Dahl. Anuj Dahl is still there on 93, seven away from a third Red Bull 100 uh, this season, but Worcestershire will want to wrap up these last three wickets as soon as they can. 307 for seven, the lead at 252. Pennington bowls, Dahl cuts off the back foot, only get a single out to uh, Kashi Valley uh, at point through they come uh, so Fanos thanks very much for your time this morning um, club made an announcement this morning um, director of cricket coming but slight tweak on previous incarnations of the role uh, that we saw under Tom Moody and obviously Steve Rhodes just outline for us how it's going to be different this time around as the director of cricket yeah it's, it's probably worth going back to you know how it was in the past with Rhodes and Moody um, in the, in the Big appeal from uh, Pennington against Aitchison, umpire not interested. In the past, um, you had a kind of combined role, this is before 2017, um, you had a combined role of head coach and director of cricket, and we always thought that was you know, quite unique and probably not ideal. Um, so what we did in uh, mid-2017 was we split those roles up. We created something called the Cricket Steering Group, which was led by, initially by Tim Curtis, who's, you know, his pedigree um, is immense, and then for the last four years by Paul Pridgen. Um, and they've taken on, I suppose, part of the director of cricket role in terms of kind of recruiting, retention of players, etc. And um, so you split that role, and I think that's important, you know, between because you can't have a coach really kind of motivating on the one hand saying, you know, you're not worth a kind of contract extension or you're you're not worth you know x amount of money. So that that role has been performed uh, in part by the I suppose the director of cricket role, as as, as it would be defined elsewhere, has been carried out by Paul Pridgen um, and I think really well um, and also the kind of the other aspect of a director of cricket role is the kind of developing the players and developing the coaches and that was that's been done by Kevin Sharp now Kevin Sharp is you know, 63 years young at the end of the season and he's 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 going to retire at the end of the season so it was a natural um, natural kind of move for us to kind of combine the roles with Paul standing down as well because uh, it is really very very time consuming as a volunteer role and and for the first time really go out and advertise for a standalone as director of cricket and we're quite excited about it I mean cricket leaks um, and we spoke to the players and the coaches last last week so it's not a surprise to them of course um, and we've already been you know we've already received quite a few applicants already so um, yeah we're quite excited about this role. When are you looking to have someone in position? Certainly um, in time for the start of the 2023 um, season. The, the, uh, the, the job description's gone out um, today. Um, applic applications, I think that the end date's the 30th of August, and we'll probably interview in September, October, and hopefully they're, they're ready for pre-season. Here comes Joe Leach starting a new over from the Diglas end. In he comes, bowling to Ben Aitchison, who pushes his back past, and they think about getting a run, but Jake Libby is across very quickly and slides, and... Uh, stops at that uh, 
possibility. 3, 11, 4, 7. The lead 256. Aitchison stays on 3. Dahl has uh, 94. So how will the relationship between the new director of cricket be with the head coach? How will you do envisage that one? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the role of the director of cricket is really to kind of you know bring the best out of the whole coaching and playing staff, um, you know, mentoring, um, you know, helping them develop. I think that's really important, um, and and also not just that, but just kind of managing all the whole cricket operations. Cricket's become really complex now. It's not just you know elite sport. It's all the pathways and the academies and you know women's cricket, which is you know you know it's delightful how how that's how, how women's sports kind of progressing. You know, you know, you have to look at the football yesterday. Um, yeah. You know, it's brilliant to see. So it is an all-encompassing role, um, but it's really just just helping everybody at the club develop, and all about kind of creating strategy and really leadership for the whole the whole cric the cricket part of our club, which is huge, of course. And it's including the science part and stuff as well, and obviously uh, the overview of the uh, academy as well as Leach. Wants into something from the umpire down the leg side against Aitchison, but um, although he's taken it cleanly, Gareth Roderick crucially uh, no bat involved yeah absolutely I mean it, it, the, the, the reporting lines um, into the director of cricket will be you know, the, obviously the, the head coach um, liaising with the captain of course as well cricket operations as you say science and medicine uh, we're um, we've we've got um, you know a brilliant medicine team it's quite new actually um, with Andy Powell and, and Pete Sim who came over from Yorkshire but that's expanding as well um, so they'll be reporting in as well and, and also you know, the analysts and also you know Elliot Wilson and his team in the academy that will report into in, into the director of cricket as well he or she who, whomever it may be yeah I mean who are what sort of calibre of candidates are you expecting I mean, you've already had some interest by this by the sounds of it um very very high I mean I mean uh, we've we've tried and um, I suppose the debate when you're looking at uh, trying to bring in a director of cricket is it something that should be in a suit or is it something that should be in a tracksuit or is mm. it something that should be kind of in between and we're very very open minded to it I think it, I think you, you do have to have some experience of you certainly have to have leadership experience in elite sport it doesn't necessarily have to be cricket but, but I think cricket is quite a specific game so you know, without kind of you know, dissuading anybody from applying should you wish to, Dan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a knowledge of cricket, you know, may or may not be advantageous, let's put it that way. <laughs> oh, that's definitely out of the way. You walk straight into that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, that sounds, I mean, change is afoot, obviously. It, it sounds that there's been a lot of work going on behind the scenes um, with uh, with Worcestershire. And, and is it, is, has it been on your mind to change the structure? I know it it's, it's a, seems a natural fit with obviously Kevin Sharp, you mentioned, and, and Paul Pridgen um, reaching the end of their time here. Yeah. But were you always thinking about it regardless of that? Um, Is that where cricket was going for you anyway? Uh, I, I think so. Is that a thin tickle behind? I think it is. Aitchison's gone. Leach has got his man. Aitchison has departed for five. It's 313 for eight. Anish Dahl watching from the other end, still six short of 100 and Worcestershire have picked up the second wicket of four that they need to get chasing this target for victory which at the moment is 258 ahead Derbyshire as uh, Leach has just found the outside edge he dangled it out there a little bit Ben Aitchison and he hasn't been able to hang around for very long 16 minutes and uh, 15 balls he's gone caught behind Leach has got his third wicket of the innings and Derbyshire now 313 for eight. Uh, you asked whether it was, you know, always in our mind to to um, you know go down the street. Um, you know, we were quite pleased, and, and you know, we've had, I think, quite considerable success with, with the model that we've we've operated under um, since 2017, where you have a chair um, effectively operating as you know de facto um, director of cricket. And you know, when I talk about success, obviously we won the blast in 18, and got to the finals in 19, and we almost got to the in the Bob Willis Trophy final in 20 and obviously this year was disappointing in, in white ball cricket but you know every county wants to win everything every all the time don't they and you know that's just not not possible in sport um, so so it, it, it's not in, in reaction to anything in particular but I think I think I think the fact that it it takes so much time now in terms of trying to for example recruit players you know Paul, Paul Pridgen and indeed everybody on the board is, is a volunteer and I, I think it's probably asking too much of one individual to do it on a voluntary basis so the fact that I suppose that, that, that Kevin you know uh, s said he wanted to kind of retire after 63 years or so in cricket 
probably kind of accelerated everything really so it's not one event but in, in aggregate yes certainly you mentioned recruitment Thanos there so ultimately whose responsibility will that be will it be the director of cricket or will it be Alex saying we want to look at this player we'd like to have a look at this we want to sign him uh, how will it work who will have the final I mean, say I, I mean the final say will be um, you know it's a, it's a key duty and responsibility of the director of cricket to you know, to be accountable for recruitment, retention, development, and the management of all, all staff. So yeah, ultimately, yeah. But I mean, it's a collective effort. How it works now is, you know, the cricket steering group, which I'm not part of. Um, they get together and they identify. You know, for example, Kashif is a good example. Yeah. You know, um, Kashif Ali, who we signed from Saka, uh, South Asian Cricket Academy, I think it's called. Um, you know, Kadir saw him. They have a cricket steering group meeting. They talk about you know its merits, and and we bring him in, and and, and they decide, and then it goes to the remuneration co um, committee to decide kind of finance of which I'm on, of course. But um, so so I, I don't think I don't think that will change too dramatically. But I, th I suppose it'll the, the specific responsibility will be with the director of cricket. I suppose as it is now with with Paul. You know, Paul 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 has you know it was it was Paul that went out and got. Matthew Wade, and then obviously he got gobbled up by the IPL, and very quickly we got Azar, um, who's been absolutely sensational. Um, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work so well. Um, uh, you know, T20, you know, that was you know, you know, very very difficult to get players at, at short notice. So so that it just it takes so much time, and we're we're, we're hiring players now. Um, there hopefully will be an announcement later on this this week, and, and I know Paul's Paul's phone has been red hot. It, it really is especially around this time of the year, a lot of effort, and therefore you need somebody as a focal point for it. Talking about T20, mentioned it a couple of times, obviously really disappointing considering where the club were only a few years ago, almost within a whisk of becoming the first club ever to successfully defend uh, the title. Uh, but last year was a bit of a, of a come down. Um, where do you feel it, 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 went, it went wrong this time? Yeah, I mean... You're talking about this season or yeah. last season? I mean, this season. I mean, last yeah. se last we season. We just had sorry, yeah, 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 but, but, we, but it's interesting gone. though because, we, as you're right, I mean, 2019 was, you know, I, I thought we'd, we'd lose the semi-finals. They needed, I think, it was a duck. It needed one run or something off the last ball, and he didn't, he didn't get it. So that was, you know, miraculous. And then you dared to believe in the final that you were, you were going to win it. So we, we almost created history. It's interesting though, Hampshire. You know, they obviously they won it at the weekend. It's the first time they've won it for ten years, so it is very, very difficult yeah. to win. So we almost really did create quite a you know, memorable history. Um, and then 2020 was obviously completely disrupted. I, I actually think last year we had it was in our hands, wasn't it? We just had to get one point, and then um, and we didn't, and then we would have got to the quarterfinals with that with with huge disruption. I think Mo played four games last year, and. We were struggling with overseas and, and injuries and, and everything else. But this year, though, on paper, and this is just the kind of the brutal nature of sport. On paper, we had an immense team, and, and it, it's very difficult to, to really understand why. I mean, there is a critical kind of review going on now. Um, you know, whether it's psychology, it's momentum, it's it's not just about numbers. On paper, we were brilliant, um, but it just didn't work for whatever reason. I don't think it helped having three different captains. Um, I don't think it helped having four away games, but and losing the first four. But then again, Hampshire you know, lost the first four and they went on to win it. So yeah. sometimes you can overanalyze it. But I think leadership is was was you know the, the the fragmented nature of leadership, the fact that you know overseas players weren't there to start with. I, I don't think it was very helpful. Can I ask you? But also, some of the sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah. and some of the senior players, you know, by their own admission, didn't perform as we expected them to do so. So. Um, there, there are certainly learns, and there's there's certainly work um, that that we need to um, need to work on. Uh, Mohammed Hasnain is bowling. Uh, he's not missed uh, a lot. What Fanos has been uh, talking. 314 for uh, eight. He's just finished his over. 12 overs, none for 46 now. So the Derbyshire lead is 259. Um, can I ask you about Mo? Because um, obviously his departure from the club confirmed. But I know. A lot of fans uh, have strong feelings about how that was all handled and how it all came out. I um, appreciate I'm putting you a bit on, on the spot with this, fans. No but do you have a do you have a view on how that has all developed and, and, and panned out? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, yes, I, I was obviously um, very very closely involved in that one. Mm. Um, and in our uh, the, the message I would like to convey is we just want to thank Mo for you know, amazing service to our club. Um, we did everything that we could. Actually, on on the Sunday evening, I think we just we just um, 
lost another T20 game <laughs> to knots and um, I was um, I was dealing with Mo and I was dealing with his um, his representatives and we we were I was we were quite confident that, that that he would have signed for us and then we got the I got the call very late at night that he kind of decided that he, he wanted a fresh challenge um, you know Warwick was you know much nearer to him um, it's a massive massive disappointment to us um, I, I know. I know that you know that there are two camps here. You, you know, one, one camp is well, he's played 70, 20 games this year, four last year, none the time before. He's you know committed to England for the next couple of years. So, what would you see of him anyway? Um, but I but I think um, you know Mo is a you know a wonderful leader and a wonderful ambassador um, for the game. And I, I just wouldn't rule anything out in the future. Um, you know, Kadir is you know very very involved in our coaching setup and doing very very well. You know, he used to say one day he doesn't, you know, come back to our club, and he would be, op- you know, he'd be welcome with with open arms. You know, we we wish um, Mo well in anything he does, apart from, of course, when he plays against us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, totally. Um, can you see from the fans' point of view when they see that the announcement, the timing of the announcement, first of all, when the game's going on, and then they see pictures of Moeen in a in a bear shirt when technically he's still contracted to the club, and I suppose. Uh, available. Can you understand some of the frustration and annoyance? Yeah, with that? yeah, I can, and and I totally agree with it. Um, and and firstly, you know, he's not technically contracted contra- contra- to us. He yeah. did definitively yes. is. Yes, so, yes, yes. I mean, we're, then yeah. Paul Pridgen was asked a question about the members for him. Um, you know, will we see Mo play for us again? Um, well, Mo's contracted to us to the end of the season. Um, you know, obviously, there's some debate as to whether or not he wants to play Test cricket again. If he wants to play a Red Bull cricket in in September for us, then it'll you know, it'll be in a Worcestershire shirt, and uh, you know he's always welcome, of course, because he's a, you know a, a class a class talent. So, um, the the announcement by um, a journalist um, during the game, um, you know, that's not how I would do things. Um, but you can't control the media, and and certainly. Um, Judging by the conversations we were having till ten o'clock that night, it, you know, he, he, you know, that, that journalist, you know, could have had, you know, egg on their face. But as it happens, you know, they got the scoop. I don't know why they chose to release it during 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 game. I thought that was very distasteful. But I'm, for, you know, I can't control that. I'm afraid, Dan. Um, in terms of, um, you know, Mo being pictured in a in a in a in a, in a, in a shirt. Yeah, I mean, that's not a good look. Um, well, again, we can only control what we can control, and if we sign players from other counties, you know, you know, and and we may, um, we would never do that. But you know, I, maybe it was a mistake. Maybe maybe he was ambushed, and you know, who knows what. But yeah, it, it wasn't a good look. I appreciate you you being candid, uh, Fanos. Thank you. Um, a word on Ed Barnard. It was sad to see him go uh, uh, as well. He's making the trip up to the M5, up to Edgbaston. But um, what a servant he's been, and he's signing off. Uh, his numbers are, are excellent again this year, aren't they? We we were so so saddened um, that that Ed um, that Ed chose to leave. Um, he's he's 27 at the end of uh, yeah, I think in November. He's given this club 15 years service. Um, you know, Paul Prison. Um, very, very close to him. He, you know, he, he um, coached him from from a, from a young boy, and uh, and I think he's taken that you know uh, to heart. We all have. We, we, you know, we all, you know, we 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 um, you know, shouldn't probably say this, but we 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 love him. We love Ed Barnard, and um, you know, he's a delightful human being. Um, it was a very, very tough decision for him, um, um, and you know. You know, th- th- there are parallels. My background is obviously not in elite sport, but it is in you know investment banking, and people do kind of hop from one bank to another. And and, and you know we we've kept lots and lots of people here, um, but we're very very sorry to to see to see Ed go. I mean, we, we genuinely genuinely wish him all the best. Mohammed Hasnay starts a new over from the new road end, a wide swinging delivery to Sam Connors, who's the new man. He's got two. Derbyshire three hundred and eighteen for eight. Anu Dahl ninety seven. So the lead is two hundred and 63 uh, well I've got you Fanos um, we know the ECB performance review is uh, reconvening the panel's getting back together September I think it is to discuss it further about the changes with the English cricket coming from next year um, it seems to me whenever they talk about changing the county game rightly or wrongly supporters of Worcestershire and today's visitors for this match Derbyshire will, will, uh, will argue all day long that why those two counters in particular along with a handful of others always seem to be the ones that get fingered as the counties that are somehow more dispensable than than all the others i'm just wondering 
how vulnerable you're feeling as a chair of one of those counties with this report looming yeah. in September. Yeah, I'm, I'm not naive to you know that you know that 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 risk. Um, I think it's always been there. You know, you've got grounds that have invested you know huge easy, you know, chase test match status, and they've got you know vast amounts of debt, and and you know does that somehow make them kind of more relevant uh, to cricket than than we are with all our academy and you know everything we do to kind of nurture talent. Um, all I would say is that um, the first class counties they they've been operating as a block now for you know almost a year now. You now we have our own meetings, we have our own representative board where you know six of us are kind of elected to kind of discuss issues and amongst ourselves, and then we go and have a chat with the ECB and, and tell them what we want. On behalf, you know, as one block, you know, uh, in the game, and and I, and I represent. Um, I've been asked to to be one of those six on that representative board, and and I've heard nothing about culling. I've heard heard nothing about, um, you know. I mean, I've heard I've heard about structures because I mean we know that they're looking at different structures, whether it's three two, three leagues of six, whether it's a first division or a second division, whether or not that may change. But nothing has been decided, and and the only people that will decide it, because you know, that's how it works constitutionally, are the ECB chairs, and um, you need a two thirds majority to implement any form of change. Um, you know, I, I do I do get the need to try and improve standards, and I think that's what the overriding kind of um, desire for this high performance review but but I think some of the stories are, are, are slightly alarmist at this stage but we shall see what you know what 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 what, what we're asked to vote on but I haven't seen anything yet Dan so I, I can't really be more definitive at the moment it's just kind of speculation mm. well it's good that, that that's the case it sounds that you're not getting any uh, signals about reduction of counts because they're talking about reducing the number of games that counties play and the consequence of that will be well, if they are only going to play ten games or eight games uh, a season, what will that mean financially? What will be the the, the knock-on effect uh, of that? I mean, there is one scenario out there that's been well documented, where um, you look at three leagues of six, mm. where then you know there's a home and away, so that's you know ten, everybody plays ten games. I don't know whether there's I, I, again I don't know, I'm, but that but that is you know, whether you play some other games after that you know the you know the best of the best you know once you've played those 10 games so i think there's a the, there is one scenario out there where you play less uh, county championship cricket but that does not mean a culling of of, of counties um I, i've not heard anything that 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 talks about a culling of counties i think that's just kind of inferred hopefully incorrectly yeah Let's hope so. That is uh, that is reassuring. Just a final. We mentioned Kashif earlier. I spoke to him last night. A lovely young man. Um, he's come through an unorthodox way to to break in uh, to the game. I'm wondering the significance of his signing, both obviously as a player, but as a wider one, coming from the, the South Asian Cricket Academy, the type that, that that you have, and the significance of opportunity when you talk about this. On the one hand, they're saying, "Well, we don't need all these counties." On the other hand, we've seen it here with George Scrimshaw formally on the books here, had to go away, get another an opportunity and you could argue without clubs like Derbyshire or Worcestershire he wouldn't be where he is today and you could perhaps make the same case uh, for uh, Kashiv. So definitely so. Again where, where else they're going to play if, yeah. if clubs like Worcestershire, Derbyshire, Leicestershire, these sort of clubs disappear? D definitely so. I mean, we, we pride ourselves on our academy, and we pr pride ourselves on you know hopefully you know giving opportunities to both boys and girls. Um, but you know the, the South Asian you know, Cricket Academy work that that's led by Tom Brown. It, it, it's fascinating some of the doctoral work that he's done because you know I spoke to him almost two years ago about um, the natural biases that exist within within cricket, and then obviously it all flared up, um, understandably so, given given you know all the all the kind of awful stuff that's happened you know with Yorkshire and Rafiq and everything else like that and his, his work and it's quite kind of stat based indicates that there definitely is a bias and and you've got to understand why there is a bias and and part of it is kind of under you know the, your cultural setup within your coaching teams making sure that they're aware of you know differences in behaviors and um, you know one of the things that kind of struck struck me and this is why I think people do miss out is you know, in 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 Anglo-Saxon cultures, you know, it's respectful to look people in the eye, like I'm doing with you now. But in other cultures, that would be deemed kind of you know disrespectful. You're the senior speaking, and and all those things, and and that, that that's the work that Tom Brown has done um, to kind of 
just because you're quiet doesn't mean you're not interested and there's all sorts of kind of other 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 aspects that kind of influence choice at, at the elite level and that's something that we've all got to get wiser to i think we are here we you know we, we're a diverse coaching team but there's much more we can do and that's why the sacker work is so powerful it's not just about signing their, the players that they've, they've kind of mopped up from everywhere else but it's actually learning um, to kind of overcome some of that kind of inherent bias that may or may not exist you know that blind spot that you know we all have blind spots we all think we're kind of open-minded but mm. but but perhaps we're not as we're not as open-minded as, as, as we need to be just finally um in my time of covering Worcestershire which is quite a long time now um, you are one of the most uh, visible um chairs we, we've had here you're often in and around the, the press box and, and and saying hello and stuff which i think is really important and really good actually um and you're approachable guy I'm just wondering are, how, are you still enjoying it are you still in the role because yeah. you, you have to put up with a lot you get a lot of hassle um, yeah you do you do have to put up with a lot I mean um, yeah, and, and um, you know I am enjoying it in answer to your question yeah and uh, you know if I didn't think we were we were moving forward then you know somebody else can you know take the reins but no I'm I am enjoying it um, I, I, I think um, you've got to be very thick skinned in, 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 in this role um, and, and at times it's difficult because you see you see all sorts of kind of you know, I, th I think everything's just kind of ratchets up a gear or two when on social media I try not to go on it because it's just, some of it's just completely inane um, but but I do like speaking to to pe members because then you, you realize actually that 95 to 99 percent of people you know understand what you're doing and the reasons why and the, and you're always never ever going to please everybody so yes I'm enjoying it um, I think it's important to be visible because I represent members um, and I'm lucky enough in, 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 in my personal circumstances where I can I can commit the time at the moment so yes I'm enjoying it but thank and you for asking no you're welcome uh, and also um, you're open enough to, to react as well aren't you to the members feedback as we saw in the in the 320 blast with that that food situation one of the games against Warwickshire I think it was and the club were very quick to come out and say well actually we may may have got that wrong yeah I mean yeah I mean that that was um a low light uh, I think really because um you know I, 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 I'm, I'm a non-exec chair we've got an executive team here and um, but we're all obviously responsible for you know good or, good or bad and um it was pretty clear that something was going wrong um, so we, we had a meeting um, late that evening after after um, you know the Bears game and I, and obviously the, 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 they was reversed the, the decision but then I went actually into the detail of you know what who was briefed and what were they said it was something I wouldn't ordinarily do and, and I'm you know really sorry but it was just over officious um, you know we should not have been taking food from from people um, we shouldn't have been taking food for people, and that was a mistake. And we, we, we acknowledged it, and we U-turned straight away. Um, but, but it shouldn't have happened. Sorry, but, but we just relaxed all the food policy because it's just easier not to have some, something that's so defined. But but that was just it. Just just shows you in sports how you know if if in, and, and it's a le it's a lesson for us all. You know, internally the messaging needs to improve, externally the messaging needs to improve, and and, that, and that's feedback that we've we've taken f quite firmly on the chin and on the nose and everywhere else. Great stuff, Fanos. Thanks ever so much for your time. Pleasure. And, and your Thank honesty you. as well. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Right, cheers. Really good. Thank you.